Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat intriguing and somewhat unusual experiment. An experiment involving mice that were genetically modified to have one single gene to be exactly the same as the one inside humans. And this produced results scientists are still trying to understand. And here this gene that generates a protein known as NOVA1 may potentially explain why humans can communicate the way we communicate and might have created our ability to produce complex ideas and to verbalize a lot of our thoughts. And so let's talk about this somewhat unusual but somewhat exciting experiment in a little bit more detail and talk about some of the potential ramifications. Now as always, you can find the study itself in the description below. And here the study by Yoko Tajima basically focused on a somewhat unknown protein known as NOVA1. It's a protein that binds to RNA molecules encoded by the NOVA1 gene. And in essence, sort of looks like this. And though like many other genes and many other proteins, it seems to be responsible for a lot of different functions, inside the brain it seems to be responsible for neural development. As a matter of fact, all of the previous studies about this gene were mostly studying this gene because it seems to be associated with a lot of different brain disorders, specifically when it has some kind of a problem. But by itself, this NOVA1 gene is also known as master gene regulator. You can essentially think of it as a kind of a master switch, and so any problem with a NOVA gene results in some serious issues. You can actually learn about this gene and its functions from one of the studies from 2014 that you can find in the description. But surprisingly, it does seem to affect at least 90% of all human genes in some way or another. But most of the interest in the last few years was really in regards to its effects on the brain. Because scientists discovered that when it creates this NOVA1 protein, this can then rearrange sections of RNA inside neurons, making them form in a very different way, making them create certain structures and develop in certain ways. Here's another study from just two years ago that essentially discovers that it seems to regulate very specific activity inside hypothalamus, with any change to this protein affecting our brain and hypothalamus in somewhat serious ways. And so the overall conclusion from many of these studies is basically that this unusual gene changes how our brain cells seem to synthesize proteins and thus changes how our neurons develop. And one of the main conclusions here is that it seems to dramatically increase molecular diversity inside neurons. And naturally, because this gene is so important, it does not just exist in humans. As a matter of fact, it looks like most mammals, or possibly even all mammals, seem to contain NOVA1 inside their genes. And obviously because this is a master gene, this should not come as a surprise. It would explain why so many mammals develop in very similar ways and even have somewhat similar brain structures. Except that there is a very small side note here. Of all of the mammals in nature, it looks like human NOVA1 gene has one tiny difference. It literally has a single amino acid that's different in human version compared to other mammals. Here, inside the position 197, the isoleucine amino acid has now been changed to valine, which though might not be a big deal, completely changes the protein in humans compared to other mammals, at least in terms of its structure. And because of this bizarre difference, for many years now, some researchers speculated that maybe this is actually something that makes us very different, and specifically, maybe this is something that gave us speech. So for the past few years, NOVA1 has actually been the so-called language gene contender, because only humans seem to have this specific form. But this was somewhat debatable because previously, in a lot of different studies, a slightly different gene was a better contender. A gene you see right here known as FOXP2, or fork hat box protein P2. A gene expressed inside the brain, the heart, the lungs, and the digestive system that also exists in a lot of different vertebrates. And intriguingly, one of the experiments back in the days revealed that when this gene is introduced into mice, they actually start to speak differently, or technically squeak differently. This was reported back in 2009, and here the human version of this gene made the mice produce slightly different sounds. Although here it also produced some additional bizarre behaviors. For example, the mice were not as curious anymore and did not feel as much joy because for some reason their brain was not producing as much dopamine. Nevertheless, this experiment and the study was actually exciting just because this was achieved and because it was now possible to test other genes just to see if we can discover this language gene and communication gene that in essence makes us human. Although when it comes to this Fox P2 gene, based on the analysis of Neanderthals and Denisovans, or essentially our cousins from back in the days, they also seem to have this gene as well, 
and was very similar to the one in humans, which back in the days implied that maybe Neanderthals could also speak like humans. And one of the reasons scientists actually thought that FOXP2 was a language gene was because of the disorders associated with the problems inside this gene. Anyone that has a mutation in this gene very often has a lot of speech defects and is unable to move their lips and their mouth in order to produce any speech. Likewise, compared to other mammals, the human FOXP2 gene is just a little bit different, but is exactly the same as the one inside Neanderthals. And so this was thought to be the origin of human language. But naturally, this was just the beginning, and obviously scientists wanted to keep looking just to see if we can find other contenders or discover something else. And so 16 years later, we get a new study. A very similar experiment, but an even more exciting discovery. Because in this case, this Nova 1 gene is definitely unique to humans. Neanderthals and Denisovans did not have the same gene either, and it seems to be one of the few genes that pretty much all humans contain. Now here I'm saying almost, because there is a very bizarre discovery. Researchers were able to collect anonymous DNA sequences from approximately 650,000 humans and discover this gene in almost everybody except for six people. Now because these were anonymous, we have no idea who they are, but for some reason, out of 650,000 people, six contained a different variant. Obviously, there's no explanation why and why they have this mutation, but it would be interesting to find out if this produced any kind of a problem with their speech. But based on the genetic analysis, we know that this gene is relatively new in terms of evolutionary times. Since Neanderthals and Denisovans did not have this gene, it must have evolved after the species split. And based on a thorough genetic analysis, scientists believe that it must have formed only a few hundred thousand years ago, possibly even less. And so because of the novelty of this gene, it was obviously somewhat intriguing to discover what effect this has on humans and what effect it might have on these mice. And that's because mice, despite containing a similar gene, do not contain the same gene. This is really uniquely human. And to test this, scientists created genetic mutations that made these genes exactly the same as human genes. And then conducted two separate experiments, one involving pups and one involving grown-up mice. And even as pups, these mice were already doing something different. Compared to a regular pup, these genetically modified pups were producing frequencies that were much, much higher. Basically ultrasonic squeaks, but in much higher frequencies than usual. And for some unknown reasons, despite a lot of screaming, their moms seem to ignore them. Normally, when pups produce ultrasound squeaks, their moms come right away. But here, even at young age, these pups were already producing different sounds and thus communicating a little bit differently. But a much more intriguing discovery came from the mice that were already older. So basically, once these pups grew up and became older, they then went on their first date, or technically had their first courting experience. And surprisingly here, during courtship, these genetically modified mice were producing calls that were very different from a regular mouse. And though the frequency was exactly the same, the actual amount of squeaks was extremely different and much more complex. In other words, they were actually making sounds that were way more complex in terms of syllables, with the overall communication being longer and more diverse. In other words, I guess in human terms, their pickup lines were very elaborate. Oh no, no, don't go! I've scared you! I've said too much! I'm hopeless and awkward and desperate for love! <laughs> And this is a really, really bizarre discovery. It really confirms that the mutation in this Nova 1 gene is potentially responsible for our ability to communicate with so much complexity and our ability to express so many complex thoughts in so many different ways. And because here this gene could also be tracked inside the brain of the mouse, it definitively confirmed dramatic changes in a lot of different sections, especially the ones responsible for communication. And this was a direct and definitive confirmation that Nova 1 protein seems to dramatically change vocalization patterns and may indeed be the human language gene. A human-specific gene that literally built our culture. And these bizarre vocalization patterns that were detected in these mice, though preliminary, still seems to suggest that even in these mice the communication became way more complex and much more elaborate. But unfortunately it seems to have failed to impress other mice. In other words, just having this one mutation would obviously not suddenly turn them human. And since the brain analysis confirms that there is a change in the vocal behavior area, right now there is little to doubt that Nova 1 was indeed responsible. But in humans, it obviously does so many other things. For example, we know that it also affects learning. And problems with Nova 1 have been correlated with various learning disabilities. 
and that's on top of approximately 90 other things it seems to be responsible for. And so basically here, it might not be just a language gene, it might be a gene responsible for a lot of other things that make us human. And something that very likely evolved in early humans and eventually became dominant because it very likely provided a lot of advantage. Advantage in communication, but also possibly things like learning and even understanding the environment. But because this is just the first of such studies, we still have no idea exactly what it does or what other effects it might have inside these mice that were now basically humanized, as the researchers refer to it in this study. And so I'm actually kind of excited to see other studies of these humanized mice, because here this discovery might finally show us the actual genetic mutations that transformed earlier hominids into humans that we are today. And so this is something we'll come back and talk more about in some of the future studies. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on a very similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.